Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for having me and I'm really and honored that you guys even invited me to this thing. Um, one thing I did learn as a speaker is that never have three speakers that are great speakers before you speak. <laughs> so I'm in trouble. So you have to bear with me. I think that the great, again, the great speakers, they did just a wonderful job. So my name is Alex Ibarra. I'm the state representative for District 13. And if you don't know what District 13 is, it's a legislative district. So it goes from Kittitas County, which is Ellensburg, Cleelum, to Grant County, which is Moses Lake, Quincy, Ephrata, to Lincoln County, which is Davenport, um, Odessa, those little towns out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I go from Suquamish Pass to Spokane Airport. It's about 200 miles. And so I cover that. Where you have representative here in Seattle, probably their little district is right in this little neighborhood, <laughs> right? But I go 200 miles, so I represent those folks over in Eastern Washington and, what, and their values and uh, try to bring those to Olympia. And so most everybody in this room is probably much more a political animal than I am. Um, I didn't go to school to become a political or a, a policy person or anything like that. I was uh, just a guy that worked. Um, but a guy that, again, a little, a little story about myself. So uh, my parents were migrant workers. They came from Texas to California, to Oregon, to Washington, to Yakima Valley, and then on to Quincy, and then to, then to Idaho, and then off to Chicago in a year time frame. And they picked pick here, pick there, do work. And then my dad finally got a job in Quincy, and that's where I was born. So I was born and raised in Quincy, farmland. I was one of those little Mexican kids with a big sombrero and uh, the, the hoe that we used to, you know, and I think somebody in this room probably has the same experience as myself as one of your regents here. And um, so that's where I came from. Uh, none of my parents or none of their friends ever went to college, so we didn't even know what college was. And so back in those days, you know, I, I remember being in the fields, it was 100 degrees out in the middle of Washington, and I remember we would complain to my mom about how hot it is, why aren't we at the swimming pool with our friends? They're all swimming, we can see them because we're in the fields. And so we would complain, she would finally turn around, she goes, Alex, or not Alex, she goes, kids, and it was my brothers and I, and she says, uh, or we said, mom, we shouldn't be here, we're kids, we're little kids. And she said, well, then you gotta go to college. If you guys don't wanna do this, I'm 37 years old. If you don't want to do this like I've been doing all my life, then you got to go to college. Well, I was third grade and I go to my brother Manny. I said, Manny, what's college? <laughs> and he goes, I don't know. He goes, Arnie, what's college? Arnold's going, I, I don't know. And then he goes off to my sister, who was like in junior high at the time. She says, well, guys, you, you know what college is. And we're going, no, we don't know what college is. Because none of our parents or anybody went to college. And so my sister says, well, you guys know how you watch the UW and the Huskies play football? We're going, yeah. She goes, well, that's college. <laughs> we're going, oh, football's college? And she goes, no, no, the University of Washington's a school and, the, and uh, Washington State University's a school. They're colleges. We're going, oh. And she goes, so what happens after high school and you graduate, there's more school. We said, there's more school after high school? <laughs> we didn't know. I mean, that's how you grow up. You, you just don't know. And so I uh, went off to college. Because I got a bachelor's of science in mathematics, started working at Redmond, Washington at a company called Rocket Research Company, and I was a rocket scientist for 17 years. And then next thing you know, I got married with a gal from Quincy, and so we moved, decided to move back home, so I worked for a public utility for 17 years. So you guys wanna know about energy? I'm the guy. <laughs> so, but I'm conservative about it too. So as a, as a, as a you know, representative, I have to represent my area as well as the state of you know, the whole state of Washington. So we have to, you know, kind of do those things. But again, when I went to Olympia, you know, again, you guys are a lot smarter than I am. I got there and I was appointed. I didn't think I was gonna get appointed to be a legislator. And when I got appointed, it was probably 6 p.m. on a Monday night and they said, you're the guy. And I said, okay, so what I do? And they says, well, here's your keys to your office. Here's the address. See you there tomorrow at nine in the morning. I'm going, well, I didn't think I was going to win, and I got to be there for four months. I got to go pack. So I went home, packed all my stuff, got in the car, and went to Olympia. And next thing you know, I'm in the house, and they said, well, you can't get on the floor of the house. And I'm going, okay, why not? I thought it was elected. And they're going, well, the local county folks have to sign a piece of paper, and they didn't sign it. So you can't get on the floor. Well, I don't know if you guys know who Frank Chop is, if you're from Seattle. He's, he's a speaker for 20 years, most important guy in, in the house. 
And so he called me in his office, and he comes to me, and he goes, uh, Representative Barron? I said, yeah. He goes, tell me about yourself. And he's da 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 and he goes, he says, uh, uh, he says, you know what, heard about your paperwork? You can get on the floor, because it was a state of the state address. The governor is going to speak, everybody is going to be there. And I go, well, I don't think I can, because my secretary said I can get out there. And this is a speaker talking to me. And he looked at her, looked at me, says, I'm telling you, you can get on the floor. I'm going, uh, this guy's the guy. So I didn't know it. And that's how much I knew about this, you know, about the legislature and stuff. So like I said, you guys know a lot more than I do. So that's how it started for me, just a regular Joe working in Quincy at a PUD. And uh, what really got me going on public service is my daughter was one year old. She, or not one, she was uh, first grade. And none of the girls in town had anything to do. There was no soccer teams. There was no, no, no teams. So I said, well, you know, I'll put a softball team together. I know how to play softball. So I got all her friends together, and it was great because in six weeks, I got these girls that never picked up a ball because they had no teams in town. They never picked up a bat, never threw the balls hardly. And next thing you know, I get them out there. I know how to do all that stuff. So I taught them, and they were having a great time. And the parents are the work. Tell you what. Public servant, parents are the worst, okay? <laughs> because you're talking about their kids. And their kids are just, oh man. And they're, they're the, you know, anything you do about the kids, when I move a kid from shortstop to second base, I got a parent in my face going, what are you doing? My kid's a lot better than her. <laughs> so my job was to go talk to the parents before the move happened, and I was really good at it and go, okay, look, I'm gonna move your kid because I need the other kid to play. So that's how my public service started, but in six weeks, I saw these girls that could never throw or hit or do anything. They, they could play. They knew what they were doing. They knew how to, and they were having a great time. The parents were happy. I was happy. And I could see this progress in six weeks. It was just amazing. So I said, well, gosh, if I can do it for a softball team, how about if I do it for like, a, maybe I'll become a school board member. I can do it for a whole school. So I, I was a school board member for nine years. And again, never did what you guys did, but like actually know what you're doing. I was just kind of going you know, off the seat of my pants. And so was a school board member for nine years and started making changes um, in Quincy. And we got a brand new high school. We passed a $108 million bond, so everything was doing great. And next thing you know, I, I get elected. Um, there was a, you know, one of the legislators um, uh, was leaving, and so the seat opened up, and there, what, there I was. I wasn't at the University of Washington to take classes to become a legislator. It just sort of happened. So I think that happens for a lot of legislators. And you don't have to be that smart. You don't have to be technically sound. Um, again, I, I'm a rocket scientist, and i also an, an engineer working in energy. And I went to the energy committee, and they started talking about the electronic grid. And so I, again, doing it for a living. The guy gets up there, and he says, everybody says, well, you know, some of the members on that committee were saying, how's the grid work? And I'm going, oh my gosh, I thought you guys were like the smartest people in the world. You're passing all these laws. <laughs> And the guy gets up there and he says, here's how the grid works. And he's writing it down. I'm sitting there going, that's not how it works. <laughs> and he keep going, uh-uh. Keep going. Uh, the whole time he was just like, mm, I'm going, oh gosh. But he was a buddy of mine. So I said, afterwards, I kind of pulled him aside and said, that's not how the grid works. And he just looked at me. He said, Alex, if you say it's strong enough, they just believe it, okay? And I just go, hmm, okay. So you don't have to be a technical expert to be on any of these committees, but... For me, I was an education committee, and I was a, a school board member for nine years. So I had a little help there. And then health and wellness, still don't know too much about it, but learning um, every day. Um, but again, I guess what I'm just trying to tell you is that you can start, you can start wherever you want to start. Um, you guys are getting a great start by getting an education to do it and learn how to do it well. And I wish I had the education you guys are going to go through in the next couple of years um, to become a great legislator. I think if I would have gone through what you guys are going to be going through and the support from these folks, um, you guys can be much, much better legislator than I can. Um, but again, I do, one last thing I'll leave you with is a little story is um, Eastern Washington definitely thinks so much differently than Western Washington. Where in Seattle, you might want to have a, to a street light at every corner because there's so many people walking in the streets. And Quincy is like, oh my God, we got our second stoplight and it's taking me three minutes to get through town, not one. So what are we doing? Why does Seattle want all these stupid stoplights? I just want one, and that's all I want. So the differences in, in the areas are so different, and so I have to navigate that as a legislator sometimes. But one thing I did find out, and it was because of the UW, found out 
that we're all the same. Uh, about six, seven years ago, a bus, a UW school bus crashed outside of Quincy in George Washington. It was the band that was going to the Apple Cup. This is about five, six years ago, I think, and uh, it was Thanksgiving evening. It was probably 20 degrees out. Um, there was probably 67 members of the four bus tour thing, and they crashed. And so what happened in Quincy, we're all like a little community, right? And so it was Thanksgiving evening, so everybody's eating their dinner. And so everybody's getting phone calls going, hey, a UW bus, bus crashed. And so I got a call because I was a school board member, and they said, hey, we don't know what to do with all these people. We got four buses, what are we going to do? We're in the middle of nowhere. So as a board member, we decided, hey, why don't we open up the George Elementary School and have been there until we figure out what to do? Because that one bus had crashed about 40 or 50, I'm not sure the numbers, but of those kids went to the hospitals, went to Ellensburg, went to, uh, went to Wenatchee, went to Quincy, went to Moses Lake. And when they got there um, on ambulance, uh, uh, what happened is they hadn't eaten dinner because it was Thanksgiving, they were gonna have a big Thanksgiving dinner that night, but they couldn't, and they were stuck in that school. So our uh, cooks came from home, cooked for them, and then all the townspeople brought pies, um, half-eaten uh, tur uh, turkeys, all the food that they had at home and brought it and fed all those folks. And so it was a pretty touching situation, but, but the great thing was, that wasn't even the, the, the great thing about it, that Quincy supported the UW and their kids. The great thing is the UW came back next year and they brought their band to Quincy High School and they played for us. One of the greatest days in Quincy. So I'll leave you with that.